What's up y'all? It's your girl Miss Shalita Maxine. Welcome back to my channel. Tonight I bring you guys another episode of Rollers and Real Talk. Uh, uh. We are up to episode 7. So I know it feels like I've been gone for a minute now. I'm back with the jump off. But seriously, like, I, okay, okay, so here it goes. I had to get it together, okay? This month has been real shaky. This was our first year hosting Thanksgiving. It was... It was, it was a lot to say the least, but we did it. It was successful. I had my family come out and everything was good. Child's mother could not attend because she was in Taiwan visiting family, but it was great. We wish she was there. My clientele has totally picked up. So in between work and if y'all don't know already, I do work at the post office. So it's a lot around this time. These packages are ridiculous, which keeps me extra extra tired but then I cannot let my makeup business suffer so with that being said I have been tied up like a shoestring and I am back with another episode this episode is definitely going to be a questionnaire I asked Matt chat to ask me some questions or if they needed some advice let me know and I will answer it in this video so yeah let's just jump right into it first question is from MSZ Dove, I'm guessing Mrs. Dove 07. My question is, how long is too long to be to be with someone? And he didn't pop the question. Is there a time length? Is five years too long? Okay, Mrs. Dove. It's funny that you asked me this question because right now I'm kind of in that that gray area. You know, Chow and I have been together for going on nine years, maybe. Off and on. So I have asked myself plenty of times, you know, when would I get the ring? Because that's what we all wait for. That's what we, you know, that's what while we're in this relationship, we are here to procreate and to to love one another. So yes, we do have that that instinct where you know we want to get married, we want to get proposed to. Is five years too long? No. And I, I'm saying this mostly because this is what I'm experiencing. I don't think five years is too long to pop the question, contrary to popular belief. People think that I'm like obsessed with getting married. I love the idea, but it's serious. It's very serious, but engaged, um, I would definitely, I don't think five years is too long, but I think it's just right. Any, I think 10 years is too long. Okay, now y'all can catch up and connect the dots. I'm approaching that. So, if I don't get a ring by the 10 year mark, me and child won't have some serious problems. But um, I think five years is adequate. Seven years is pushing it. You know, you're pushing it. Eight years, okay, what we doing? What are we doing? Especially if you already have a child. I don't know if you have children and stuff. But if you have a child, okay, y'all got to get it together and fast. We don't have any children right now. So that's um, that alleviates a lot of the pressure because God forbid if we decide to part ways, we don't have any any physical attachments, if you understand what I'm saying. So it's literally just us chucking the deuces and walking away from the relationship. But if you're like us and you know you don't have any children, I would say seven years would be the most appropriate. Um, by that time, you I believe you would truly know a person. By seven years, you're probably living together. And you know whether or not you want this to work. I think five years, for me personally, I don't think that's too long. Now, I know people that have gotten engaged. They've been together for three years, gotten engaged on the third year, and are in a successful marriage. So, I don't think it's unrealistic. But I think five years is pretty good. Um, anything but ten. When we start hitting the double digits, then we got problems. So, that is my advice to you. I hope it helped. Okay, next question. This is from Esther. Okay, so, I don't know which one is first, but... I'm going to read the second one first because the first one says also. So here we go. Okay. Basically, I'm a Christian and in the Bible it says remain a virgin till marriage. You are also religious. But I saw the video where you and Chow were talking about making love, standing up and stuff. Laughing emoji. So I guess you didn't exactly remain celibate. No hate. But I was just wondering, is it realistic to keep that promise? Okay, Esther. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Even the, the X-rated type of talk videos. But um, I think it's absolutely realistic. I was a virgin until I was 20. Well, a month before my 20th birthday. That was my goal. To lose my virginity 
the night that you know I was officially married and you know we lose our virginity together that was my idealistic wedding night however life gets in the way your flesh does get weak and temptation is a mug so I was battling between is this what I want or do I want to make someone else happy and for a long time like I promised my Nana when I was like 12 I remember I will never forget this day she said Lily, whatever you do please wait until you're married to have sex now I don't know if that was you know so I don't know if something happened because I have a lot of aunts so I don't know if something happened with my aunt and maybe she was like let me just try to stir Lee in the right direction but I do appreciate that and I will forever love my Nana beyond how I already love her but I will love her for that because she instilled in me at a very young age to you know try to protect myself and try to you know and definitely think of my body as a temple treat my body as such and not rush to have sex because a lot of people my age during that time were getting pregnant and things like that so I definitely appreciated that from her and I gave her that promise unfortunately a broke promise my bad girl but um i think it's very realistic you have to have strong discipline one of the main things i think in maintaining your abstinence because if you haven't already had sex which i'm assuming because you put the word celibate celibate is you know already have had sex and now you're you know you're waiting until you get married or whatever but i believe you're looking for the word abstinent and one of my greatest suggestions on maintaining your abstinence would definitely be to not surround yourself with sex i.e songs videos books those erotic books things like that because then that'll get the, your mind wondering your juices flowing no pun intended but it would you'd start thinking i wonder how this feels and things like that now when i was a virgin for however for 19 years um i would think about that but i also was doing other things to um to get pleased or to reach that point you know I was masturbating and I was participating in oral sex with my boyfriends it wasn't like I was you know with every dude you know doing oral sex I didn't re I didn't give it but I did receive it I didn't child was actually the first person that I had or I gave oral sex to so but that's another story for another time or do I was doing other things and that doesn't make it right but I did not officially have sex until I was ready and um, I felt like child was the person that I was going to marry and that's why I made the decision to go ahead and have sex with child or lose my virginity to child or give him my virginity however you want to word it um, but I definitely think it's realistic and if you are a virgin kudos to you and that is goals you are goals um continue doing what you got to do stay focused stay disciplined and do not be easily influenced i feel like a lot of the times especially in a relationship with someone they may say they respect your decision on staying a virgin until you're married but then then along the, the the course of the relationship you may hear things like but i love you and i want to express it and i want you if you really love me you would express it so forth and so on so i feel like um if you clear that out and don't let it cloud your judgment you'd be good girl and that is again goals every man wants that so keep going keep going you doing good boo okay so let's answer your second question also how do you talk to an asian man like i've been talking to one for five ish years and i want things to progress but he's given a lot of mixed signals i know you're not an asian man laughing emoji but maybe you and child could both answer that so child is playing the game this is my episode maybe we could answer that in another blazing chronicles episode but i will give my advice i'm sure you've seen how we the, how we met video if not i'll link it down below or somewhere if you've seen that you know that he was definitely the one to pursue me so i didn't have to initiate any type of conversation or anything like that he did that for us yeah for us so but you know i did encounter other Asian men during our off times and it wasn't like I was attracted to them or addicted to them or obsessed with them but while we were in the re our relationship I did join stumble across a group that was specifically for Asian men and black women and um, you know I made a lot of friends and and for, for the most part they always were interested in me so I didn't have to do much but you can talk to an Asian man honey you can definitely talk to them I mean the worst they can say is I don't date outside my race and that, that, that doesn't you know mean anything personal to you even though you may take it personal because who wouldn't but that's not directed to you maybe they're just very traditional and or maybe they don't want to upset their parents or whatever the case is because you got to think about it you know the Asian community they're very tight-knit and you know to date outside of that 
can be looked down upon so you know definitely don't fear rejection i feel like um if you do then you'll never fully live your life like again if the worst that could happen is you know a no and that's not the end of the world for you so i'm not really sure what you mean by how do you talk to an asian man like did you mean a language barrier did you mean i don't know so if you could just be a little bit more specific sorry about that my camera stopped recording i don't even know where i was um i hope that you heard the the, the good stuff moving on to my next question thank you so much for your question esther this is from jessica jose first time you and child had sex what did you expect okay so the first time child and i had sex first of all i was a virgin so i expected it to be very painful I expected it to be, um, I didn't expect it to feel good because I've always heard so many stories where it was painful, it was blood, it was, you know, things like that, like very horrific stories. So I was hoping that it would be romantic and just straight out of a movie, but um, I did expect it to be romantic. And I'll give you a short story, <laughs> basically. I was telling him that I wanted to lose my virginity, I was ready to lose my virginity, and he was fearful. I don't know. He just told me that he wasn't sure if, you know, he was ready for that type of responsibility. I'm guessing it's a responsibility. I don't know. Maybe he thought that I had, I had you know, crazy expectations. But oh, anyway, we did have sex in my room. And it hurt like hell. And uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be like excruciating pain. I wasn't going to be able to take it. It wasn't as bad. But I will say that if we did not have a full session, um, after about the third or fourth pump or stroke or however you want to word it, um, I was crying. It was a very emotional time. And I remember him like just comforting me and telling me how much he loves me. And it sounds cheesy, but that's what he did. And in that moment, that's what I needed because I'm like, wow, this is it. Like, I'm really having sex. This is having sex. Later on down the line, I figured that that wasn't sex. You know, now I'm just... I didn't have too many expectations aside from the fact that I thought it was going to be terrible. But it was actually a good experience. If I had to choose, you know, any way to lose my virginity, it definitely would have been in that way. Because that was something that I wanted to do in that moment. I did not feel rushed. I did not feel um, extra seduced. You know what I mean? Like, he wasn't aggressive. It was on my term, on my time. And I really appreciated that. So, the experience was... Okay, next question that you have is... I know you used to believe the stereotypes that are put on Asian men, little dick, whack at sex, etc. First time I had sex with an Asian guy, it blew my mind and my back. So how was it like for you and did you used to believe the stereotypes? Honestly, just like I was never into Asian men. So it didn't even cross my thought process to think like, oh, all Asian guys have small dicks or they're whack at sex. Because that wasn't even like I was 18 when I met child. So asian men and sex was like far from my mind i wasn't even thinking about that during the beginning stages of chow and i you know i would think about it because i would hear things and um <clears throat> yeah that little dick thing yes yeah, not true it's not true now i don't know if you're familiar with a lot of asian porn stars i'm not even gonna talk about my man because that's my man but I don't know if you're familiar with porn stars, Asian porn stars, but this is Asian porn star named Kimi Styles. Okay, honey, let me tell you right now. He is there to correct any type of myth, stereotype, anything. Okay? He is packing. He is well endowed. And he knows what to do. So, I'm going to need you to go look that up. Kimi Styles. K-E-N-I Styles. S-T-Y-L-E-S. Yes. So, yeah. So, that should fix your mind. I feel like the stereotype of Asian men having, you know small genitalia um is the same that all black men have big penises which we all know is not a fact so you think about it in that type of light and, and in terms of whack ass sex i never i never considered that what i did hear like in the beginning of me and child you know talking and things like that i used to hear things like asian men that are into black women they worship like the ground that they walk on and they are very 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 serious and pleasing a woman especially a black woman they take that very seriously and i heard i heard that this about to sound so crazy but i heard that child was pretty good he gonna hate the fact that i said that i am so sorry babe i love you 
I promise. You know, I was curious because I did hear that. Because like I said, me and Child met way before we officially met. So I, w I heard that and I, I was a little curious. I'm like, hmm, I wonder what that mouth do. I was pleasantly surprised. So I would say that you cannot judge a book by its cover. I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't want to make this episode too long. Okay, so I have three more questions. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to save these questions for the next episode because these questions about to get crazy. I'm tired. It's already 10 o'clock. I'm about to go to bed. But I hope y'all enjoyed this episode of Rollers and Real Talk. Please stay tuned for episode 8 where I will be continuing with these questions. If you have any questions or ideas on another episode of Rollers and Real Talk, Blazing Chronicles, or Makeup Tutorial, definitely leave it in the comment section below. Or you can email me at rollersandrealtalk at gmail.com. And I will definitely answer any questions or offer any advice that you may need. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've made it this far, I love you a lot. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.